We're huge fans. Thank you so much. What advice would you give us? We want to be the next you. What are your names again? My name. It doesn't matter what your names are! You guys met on a movie years ago. Tooth Fairy, uh, you're welcome. Oh yeah. Years later, this happens. When you watch the documentary, uh, that made you go, hey, this could be an excellent movie. Was Steven the first person that jumped into your mind? He was. Steven was the very first person I thought of, um, Spielberg. And <laughs> when he passed, uh, <laughs> then I went Soderbergh. Yeah. yeah. And then I went to uh, my a local. Long list There's of a Stevens. long <laughs> list of Stevens. Stevens. Um, the moment I heard Steven's name, I wish I could take credit for it, it was Kevin Misher who said, hey, what about Steven Merchant? I said, ah. I love that idea. And then the next step was, would he respond to the material? For me, I don't have that same background, but this is a working class family who just had these dreams and these desires, and particularly their kids, to go on and kind of enter the world of mm -hmm. entertainment and shoot for the stars. And I, that's something I responded to very much, you know, just coming from the comedy and acting point of view, you know? So I do think yeah. there's a sort of universality to this story that's not just about wrestling, it's about anyone who's got this sort of dream and this desire and, and the challenges that it takes to, to get there. This is our shot, Doug. Hello. Why do you want to wrestle? I'm the toughest bastard in any room. It's a, it definitely transcends the sport, because as you watch the trailer, you get grabbed. We went to WrestleMania itself, and Dwayne walked out there, he had a flamethrower, and there was a giant <laughs> sign which just said The Rock, and he spent about 20 minutes setting fire to it, while the crowd went berserk. <laughs> yes, is that your own flamethrower? It is, yes. yes, yes. I you have it in my bedroom right now, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I enter the bedroom. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's why I have many babies, yes. <laughs> when I said The Rock is on fire, I've been here is on fire. When I first saw the documentary, I was like, I know that family. A crazy, loving, at times dysfunctional family. That was my family growing up. And like Paige's family. My grandmother was the first female wrestling promoter ever. My grandfather was a wrestling promoter. He was also a professional wrestler. My dad, my uncles, my cousins, you name it. Pro wrestling when I grew up um, in the 70s and 80s, it wasn't as the big global entity that it is today. It was little small promotions in every state. At that time, because it wasn't the big global entity, a lot of wrestlers were living paycheck to paycheck. For example, you know, Aronofsky's movie, The Wrestler, a lot of wrestlers, like my dad, like my uncles, wound up like that. Thank God I started making a little bit of money that I could take care of my family. So when I saw that documentary, I was like, man, that's my family too. How did you get into wrestling? I myself had done eight years in prison. What was that for? Mainly violence. <clears throat> Did Merchant sell? Merchant was the best. Merchant was the best of the Stevens, and I say that respectfully <laughs> by the, to the other Stevens. But you know, the guy came in and you know, uh, uh, and, and took a, a piece of tapestry and mosaic that he was like, "What the f is this crazy world of wrestling?" And he embraced it, and he studied it, and he and he wrote it, and directed the hell out of it. And I'm very, very proud. And I should just say that Dwayne Johnson was not my first choice to play Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> um, 